Hi, this is Jody, and this should be called Hacking with Jody. We are going to hack the classic game console Atari and the classic game Pac-Man. I hope you know about the Pac-Man. It's, it's one of the best selling games ever, at least in some era. It first came to the uh, larger consoles and then it came to the home consoles, especially with the up Atari. It was a flagship game on Atari. I was kind of playing with the game, also trying to crack it just to sharpen myself on assembly language, uh, disassembling machine code, CPUs, whatever. It's like a hobby and you can enjoy it first and also it will show you the internal works of the consoles, at least old consoles, and also you will see how cool assembly language can be. Atari console uses a uh, uh, 6507 CPU. Why it says? Ah, okay. It uses a 6507 CPUs, which is a version of 6502. This is a stripped down version, although the number is higher, but it's a cheaper stripped down. Very, very small CPU. Uh, very small games, limited address memory to four kilobytes. So you only have four kilobytes to write your program, uh, keep the state and everything you need to do. So this is so cool. It only has 128 bytes of RAM, which is amazing and impressive to write a whole game with this much of RAM, with this much of program. And some programs were even much, much, much smaller than four kilobytes. In this uh, video, what we want to do is we will run an emulator, we will run Pac-Man in it, and then we will go to reverse engineer it and see how the internally it works, and then start breaking the game step by step. First, I will try with increasing my lives, so I won't die after three deaths, and also later we may do uh, extra works. Let's see how it works. We have a very nice emulator, Stella. If you search for Stella Atari, you will find the emulator. If you go here, you can download it. This is what we used to do in old times. We used to really, really write programs to manipulate the memory. Nowadays, we have emulators, which makes everything much, much, much easier. So it's only a software job. You don't need to do anything on the hardware level. You will go to the download. You download your emulator. So you will have Stella running. I have it here. Also, it runs on Mac, Linux, whatever you have. Also, if you search for Atari ROMs, you will find a huge collection of ROMs for Atari games. So first, you can play your old school games and enjoy them. For example, we can go to the Atari 2600. Here we have, for example, top 10 games. You can download whatever ROM you want, the famous River Ride, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, all the old games are here. So when you download them and you have the Stella running, do I have the Stella running? Yes, it's here. You will have the ROM here and you can just enter and play it. See? But if, you, if I, ah, oh, now I took that special box and I can eat these monsters. But now I cannot eat them anymore. So if we hit each other, I will die. See, I have three lives, now it's two. If I die once more, like an idiot, I will have one. The feature which I'm going to use on Stella is pushing this button. I think this is called tilde or whatever. The one just near the one in international or US English keyboards, the tilde. Okay, I've just pushed that one and you are in a debugger. The cool thing is this debugger is showing you what is going on inside the Atari itself. You have a 
console here which you can run your commands and everything you have the 128 bits of ram sorry bytes of ram here so this is your ram this is the software the program the whole program these are the registers inside the cpu and other stuff which we may see later this is the game what is going on at the moment okay so what is going on you have some simple buttons like here if you push the step one assembly line of code will run we are on address f880 if i do the step i will go to the next and this is the assembly program which is being run this is the equivalent hex code so if I do the step, the command which is run is LDA RAM 82. Load the accumulator from RAM 82. This will be saved in the memory if you run this step. This is the assembly language. This is a direct equivalent number in the, we call it opcode. A5 might be for the LDA. 82 is the position of 82 in the RAM. So these are the same, but this is more human readable if you are a human who can read the assembly. So let's do it. If I go one step, so I will run one command. See, this is saved here. In 82, we have we had zero. It In each step, a Stella debugger will show you what is changing in the RAM, what is happening, what is going on. One by one assembly is running. What I really, really enjoyed about this kind of debugging is the fact that, in my opinion, this is one of the best entrance points, entrance points to the assembly language. It's very difficult to learn what is accumulator, how accumulator works, what is the addition, what is subtract, what is jump, what is this, what is that, and then create a game with them. It's much easier to see this is Pac-Man. Now let's see what is doing. You can do very, very fun things with the Stella. This is exactly what we used to do, for example, on Commodore. We used to have cartridges. It's a loud car. We used to have cartridges. In the Commodore, we could freeze the whole game, just like what I did with the Stella, with this lovely button. And then we could manipulate memory, check the instructions being run. One of the easiest things is this one. I will, I'm going to show you. Let me die. Now it's a... Uh, oh, I don't have any lives anymore. Now I'm dead. Totally dead. So what I can do is... Freeze the game. See? I have three lives remaining here. Okay? So this should be saved somewhere in the memory. Here in this memory, I should have a tree somewhere, which keeps this one. We may have different memories showing tree. But there is a function in Stella, which is searching for number three. It says only this location contains the number three. So we were lucky. If we were not lucky, we may continue the game. We die. And now we have two lives remaining we can do a search for two sorry for two and it will show us only this position contains the number two again we were lucky and exactly we found the position which contains our lives if i increase this to four see i found where in the whole memory we have a two because i have two lives remaining if i've increased this to four i change the memory I will run the program and you can see that I have four lives remaining. Ah, sorry, I put to escape. No issues. Once more, I will go here. I will enter the debugger. I will search for number three. We have two places in the memory with the three in them. So one of these should be my lives. I can run the program and continue playing and die. Now, one of them should be changed to two. I will go to my debugger again. I had these two. I can say compare with two. I want to show only the ones which are two now. And I have only one memory, different color. So I know that here is the place that contains 
the lives. So if I increase this, I will go with five, then run the game. And now I have five lives remaining. See, this is how you can change the memory. But you are not, you have not cracked the game properly because each time you have to freeze it, increase your lives and everything. This is not very interesting. What I want to do, I want to read this assembly code and found out where it increase or decrease the position nine, eight, right? Now I know that what I know is, I know that the position nine, eight in the memory points to my number of lives remaining. Stella has some nice things here too. What was this? It was interesting. CLS. The command is right, is known as a, I don't know. We can use the help and read all the help. It was a trap in my debugger. I have some interesting command, which is, for example, break, breaks at one specific address. I can say whenever you reached here, break the program, I want to check it. But there is one thing which breaks or traps only if something is written to the memory. Rewind, reset, save, trap, trap right, trap right, trap right access to address. This is very nice for me. I can say CLS, so you will see the whole screen. I can say trap right whenever I'm writing. As you can see, the hex numbers are shown with a dollar in front of them. Nine, eight, right? Whenever someone writes to 98, please stop the program. And I want to debug because this was the 98 containing the number of remaining lives. I will run the program. I will try to die. Now I'm dead. Ah, it stopped. See exactly here. It says DEC RAM 98 which means decrease the RAM 98 position. So this change, 98 change to four, so my trap work, the program stops and say, I just did this. This is an assembly code. We can check this to see what it does. I can say 656502, this is which is more general. Assembly DEC. You will see that this is the decrement memory command. So what is really at the moment being run on the system is this DEC RAM 98, which decreased this by one. This is assembly code. This is the equivalent opcode. You can see it here for sure. See, DEC is the assembly code. The equivalent machine code is See, DEC dollar dollar zero zero decrease operation subscribe content of zero page address by one. So what I did was decrease RAM 98. This is what a little bit help of this disassembler. Instead of telling this, this 98, it shows that this is the number on the RAM. This is pointing to the position of 98. And Equivalent code, this is called opcode, is C698. If we see in our uh, software, we see C6 number number. This is the equivalent of decrease one. So on the cartridge, physically, it is written C698 in binary for sure. And in assembly, it means decrease this memory by one. What I'm going to do is disable this command. What can I do? First, one idea is doing a increase in case of decrease. I can search for 6502 increase. I want to see what is the opcode because I cannot write assembly here. Opcode is increase is E6. So I can say instead of C698, which is decrease the position 98 in the memory, 
I will do a, was it a D6? The E6. E6, 98. And run the program. Now, if I die, what I want to see is, I have four lives now. I'm dead. I had a trap right here. So it stopped. I can delete this trap. How does it work? Trap delete? Zero, zero? No. Del trap, missing requirement. Del trap, zero, zero. I removed this trap. I had a trap that whenever this memory place changes, inform me. So I will run. See, I remove the decrease and replace it with the increase. And now whenever I die, I will get one more extra life instead of decreased life. This is so cool. But again, after some time, this will become idiotic. It's better not to change them at all. What we most of the times use to break games is using NOP operations. NOP operations in assembly is no operation. Do nothing. Let's see what is opcode. I will search for 6502 no operation opcode and see what is the opcode for this. Let's see where we have it. This is good. No operation in assembly languages do nothing and its hex equivalent is EA. EA in machine code means nope in assembly code, which means do nothing, no operation in human code. Unless you are a human who speaks in... Ah, we lost where we were. So, I will need my this trap again. Oh, sorry. I need this trap to find the location. Tell me whenever that memory is changed. Now I'm dead, the memory will be changed. So I was here when it was changed. This was increased. See, the only point is here, it this increase, which used to be decrease of this RAM position was two bytes. My, was it EA? Yes, my EA, is one byte so i need two eas not to break other things because i want to practically delete this line so i have to say nope and nope because this is two bytes see it is two bytes so this one practically i mean increase ram 98 is e698 so this is two bytes i will should go with nope nope which we know that the equivalent is EA. So I will replace this with EA, EA. Look at the assembly. Now I have nope, nope, do nothing, do nothing, continue. I found the exact place where the lives are saved. Then I checked how it is changed. Then I went with increasing it. Then I went with nope, nope. So do nothing whenever the, I, practically I removed the command which used to control that part of the memory so I can go here I'm dead and my lives stayed untouched so this is the game I want what I have to do is I have to go to the debugger again and I have something save ROM I think yes ROM save to desktop Pac-Man I've changed if this was a game cartridge, I literally changed two bytes in its memory and saved it. Now I go with escape, escape. I can go here. I can go here. I can go to the desktop. And on my desktop, I have a new ROM. If I run this ROM, this is what I have created. Space, I start the game three lives and in my new ROM the decrease is replaced with nope and I don't die anymore why this is cool to do let me reduce the volume why this is cool to do 
First, it will show you the internals of the world, which is like the Matrix life. Second, it's a very, very, very good entry point to learn assembly. Or if you know the assembly, it's a very nice entry point to uh, sharpen your skills, your assembly full. Uh, third, it's a good way to spend your time, play, and see what you can learn. It's always good to learn. Now it's much fun, much more fun to... Ah, no, 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 this is not much more fun because I don't die anymore. But this is fun to learn this thing, to do this and understand more deeply what is going on on consoles. Anyway, this was what I was doing and I wanted to share with you. On the next session, it's good to have another one. I will show you the concept of uh, sprites, how the, these characters are managed on Atari and how we can check the collision and stop the collision from happening. So we can just go over each other without dying. So you won't need to waste your time and seeing the animation that you are dead and start again. You just go and eat everything and have a boring Pac-Man life. Hope you liked it. What you can do is downloading Stella, download one ROM, preferably the ROM you enjoyed during your childhood, and try to see how it internally works. Even you can scroll in this program, you can see the scroll bar. It's uh, moving very, very fast. And as we said, the whole thing in Max can be four bytes, although there were some tricks to make it a bit faster. And you can see even we have the sprites here. So you can change this thing. This is me. In some part of the memory, this is recorded. I can change even this one and create a new Pac-Man with a hole in its belly. Here I can do. And you can just watch your the source code of your programs, your childhood programs, see how they work. and run the game again and have your own version. See, now I have a hole in my belly. So, even the voice, sounds, everything is exactly part of this small, small program. I think these are the musics. So, happy hacking. Enjoy and learn deeper and deeper. It was Jody, and I will record another one with the collision detection. Have fun.